turbochargers will degrade in performance, attributable to abrasion or fouling of parts after long usage. These may be developed into failures if overlooked. In order to prevent the performance degradation and trouble, periodical inspection of parts is required. Now, remove the compressor side thrust bearing from the support. Use a hex key to remove the thrust bearing side hexagon socket head cap screw. To lift and remove the bearing, screw the same bolts into the threaded hole in the compressor side thrust bearing. If a thrust bearing becomes worn, the tapered part gets smaller and the ratio of the flat part to the tapered part gets bigger. To check the extent of wear, first put a thin even layer of red ink on the thrust collar. Gently place the colored side of the thrust collar on the metal surface of the bearing. Gently turn the thrust collar in the rotating direction during the operation. Then, lift off the thrust collar and observe where red ink has been transferred to the thrust bearing. If the red paint contact check shows that the ratio of the length of the tapered land to the length of the flat land is 2 to 1, replace the thrust bearing with a new one. Replace also if it is assumed to reach the limit of use by the next inspection. For the details of standards that may or may not be used when judging tapered land comparison, please check the instruction manual at hand. If you have difficulty making an evaluation, it is advisable to replace the thrust bearing with a new one. If the metal surface of the thrust bearing is deeply scratched, has multiple scratches, has surface separation, or is cracked, replace the thrust bearing with a new one. Please inspect the turbine side thrust bearing in the same way. If you closely observe the rotor shaft, you will be able to see the sliding width relative to the journal bearings. These parts of the rotor shaft are the journals by which the rotor shaft is supported. Install the journal bearing on the removed rotor shaft. With this journal bearing sliding part, use a dial gauge to measure the clearance between the inner surface of the journal bearing and the rotor shaft with the upper side of the inner surface pressed against the shaft. Compare the measurement with the clearance standard table in the instruction manual. If the metal surface appears to have many scratches or to be deeply scratched, replace the bearing with a new one. Do not attach the dial gauge to the rotor shaft. If you did, the rotor shaft would get magnetized. The locking pin is attached to the journal bearing. Replace the journal bearing if this pin is worn by 2 mm or more in width or broken. Measure the outer diameters of the sliding parts. If the outer diameter of the sliding part is smaller than the adjacent outer diameter by 0.02 mm or more, please contact Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. We recommend that the impeller be inspected by means of dye penetrant flow detection for the backside and entire blade of the impeller. If any defects are found, replace with a new impeller. In the event that the leading edges of the impeller blades are indented from collision with a foreign object, please note the location and size and contact Mitsubishi Heavy Industries for consultation.
Cleaning should be performed with a soft object, such as a sponge, with surface dirt removed using kerosene or warm water. Do not use a wire brush or any similar hard object. To clean the turbine wheel, dip them in a container of warm water to remove the deposited carbon scale. After removal, clean the turbine wheel. After washing the turbine wheel, dry them thoroughly and coat them with rust-proof oil. In the event that the radial turbine blades are indented from collision with a foreign object, please consult with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Like the turbine wheel, clean the nozzle after washing in warm water. After cleaning the nozzle, dry it thoroughly and coat it with rust-proof oil. Visually, inspect the nozzle in a well-lit location for abnormalities. The air filter must be cleaned at least once every two months. Soak the filter for two to three hours in lukewarm water in which a neutralizing cleaning agent has been dissolved. Then, gently wash the filter by hand. After washing the filter, dry it thoroughly by placing in a shaded location that's well ventilated. If the filter is broken or torn, replace it with a new one. On the compressor side of the bearing pedestal, an inlet of the sealing air channel is provided. Check that there is no evidence of lubricant leakage into the sealing air channel. Also, Confirm that the air comes out on the turbine side by feeding general service air into the channel.